Good evening, welcome back. It's Fight Sports Uncovered Thursday night, exclusive here on Love World Set with me, your host, Mark Chabern. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for joining us for yet another build up to a massive weekend of punchy, kicky action. It's the night before Valentine's Day. And yes, believe it or not, there is going to be some punch kick action on Valentine's Day. Maybe it's going to work out for some of those fighters. Maybe it's not. We'll have to wait and see. Um, tonight's show, in proud partnership with Ben Knuckle, we're going to be talking a little bit about the exciting Ryan Garcia. He is up against uh, Francisco Fonseca, that in a lightweight belt. It's also the IBF super middleweight title fight, Caleb Plant up against uh, Victor Fagenbutz. And then it's UFC Fight Night 167. We're going to be talking all about that. And the man that's going to help me through tonight's show, the man to my left, uh, he is a former professional MMA fighter. He is a gym owner. He is a coach. He's a mentor to many young up-and-coming boxers, fighters, uh, MMA fighters. Uh, I'd like to welcome, um, first of all, Brendan Katz. Brendan, thanks so much for allowing us here in your gym, Norwood, Johannesburg, Fight Sports Center. Dude, Awesome. We haven't spoken. I think last time we spoke was on radio. Now we're on TV. How's things going in the fight game? Yeah, listen, I mean, it's a growing sport. It's growing worldwide. Uh, the gyms are growing nicely. You know, we've got one here and one in Bedford View. We're going to take over the country. It's a fast growing sport. We do it better than anybody else. So, yeah, it's interesting times, eh? Talk about that other gym that you've opened up in Bedford View. The thinking around extending sort of the reach of Fight Sports Centre. So we do, we do a bunch of stuff that no one else in the industry does uh, in terms of, you know, obviously the, the skill stuff that we do and that sort of thing, but also in terms of, you know, the service delivery side of things, you know, we, we just hold ourselves to a much higher standard than anyone else and we make sure that all our clients have great time and they get great results, yeah. And so, you know, it's inevitable. We will take over the country and we'll, we will go worldwide. Looking at the mix of fighters that you train, I mean, it's literally from moms, homeowners, et cetera, et cetera, right the way up through to some professional fighters. You've got a mix of, 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 of athletes training out of your centers from not only MMA, you've got kickboxing, you've got Muay Thai, you've got the whole bang shoot sort of sitting right here. Mm -hmm. We don't have the whole bang shoot. I mean, it's fight sports center. So any sort of combat sport that you can compete in, I'm happy to offer it. Um, you know, whether that's Taekwondo, Karate, you know, we're offering Taekwondo, uh, we're offering Karate in Bedford View. Uh, we don't do it here because, you know, you can get better coaching here from the Dorflins. Um, and they're, they're not far, so I'd rather not challenge them in a game we're not going to win. Uh, but that said, you know, we do have, you know, we've got people who, who fight professionally and we've got people who the only fighting they do is with their spouse. You know what I mean? And, uh, we don't they, want that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, people come in here, they, most of the time they come in, they want to lose weight, they want to, you know, they want to tone, they want to feel good, get rid of a bit of stress. They come here, they're very happy and they stay. Yeah. Looking at the sort of mixed martial arts, the combat sports space in South Africa, your thoughts on what's happening in combat sports here in, in, in the country? There's a lot of talent here. So, you know, I mean, you look at the boxes that have come out of this place, the quality of the coaches that come out of this place, you know, and across all the combat sports, karate, boxing, mixed martial arts, wrestling. I mean, we've got high level wrestling coaches here, you know, and because of the bureaucracy and because of the political involvement, um, that's sort of, that's stunted. We're not showing the best that we have. And yeah, that's, I think, I think, you know, there needs to be changes in the political landscape and you'll see a lot more talent coming through. And there's no doubt we can be world champions across all the combat sports. When you're talking political, we're not just talking politics, we're actually talking administration at the administrative level. Um, I know you very much like me, have been very, very open, uh, very, very sort of against some of the administration that's taking place, not only in MMA, but also in boxing. Your thoughts, any sort of light on the horizon? So, so look, I mean, boxing has recently been taken over by a new guy. Uh, that's been the last, I think, 18 months or two years, maybe a little bit more. And he seems to be on the ball. He's a younger guy, he's got an interest in sport, he comes from the PSL. Um, so, so he understands how to properly administer things. It's, you know, it's, gonna, it's a big job for him, but I think he's a good guy and I think he may get it done. Uh, as far as MMA goes, there's um, administrative difficulties that they have. There's, you know, I've personally requested financials from them. It's a, it's a not-for-profit, so you know, they do need to provide financials. Uh, they're, they're obligated to do that, and I've never seen them. So I, f I, find it, I, I, I find it very difficult to play ball with somebody who I don't trust. So, you know, unless, unless that changes, I'm, you know, we're, we're on our own. And the reality is, you know, they're not, go they're not a government body. Uh, it's not like BSA, which is written into the Constitution. This is what you need in order to be a pro boxer, in order to compete. It's not in the Constitution in any way, shape, or form. Um, 
Yeah, that's, that's basically what I think it the is. The impact that that has on your sort of crop of amateur fighters, because remember, for those amateur fighters to compete, they have to compete in a sanctioned MMA event. They do. They do have to compete in a sanctioned MMA event in order to have their records recognised by MMA SA in order to give them their pro licences. Um, it's, to me, they're not, they're just not really relevant. You know, I'll play ball with them just to sort of expedite things, uh, but no more than I have to, and I think that a change is definitely in order. Word is that the change is coming. Uh, I see a lot of stuff happening at the IMAF level. There's now an African sort of regional committee that's been set up to fast track a lot of the, the goals and the aims of IMAF. Does that kind of sort of news and information sort of bring a little bit more optimism to yourself? Clearly not. <laughs> Clearly not. That's, that's what it is. Well, I think for me, very, very sort of open, very sort of... Uh, I've had lots to say, negative things to say about what MMASA is doing. I see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. It's, it's just going to take a bit of time. I think we need to now see promises have been made. I know 2016 they made a lot of promises. None of those promises have been delivered on yet. These new ones, maybe IMF flexing their muscle, trying to push things. Well, we'll happening. see. I think, I think that no one really gives, can I, can I swear? No, no, no. Okay, no, so, no, no. so no one really cares about this country. Um, as far as like an international level goes, I think there's a lot of good guys locally who are on that board who are being hamstrung by the guys who, who are swinging the club in that, in that, in that thing. Um, I think that, you know, so long, as, so long as there's positive change, then things can start happening. And th there's the potential for it because there are the people there. And it's the same thing worldwide. You know, that the guys who, who are there because they want to help and want to give value are there, but they're superseded by the guys who want to have political power and just swing, swing the club around just, just because they can. And I think bringing personal issues into this sort of thing is a tremendous mistake and I know it's happening. Absolutely, we know there's a power game happening at combat sports. I think not even combat sports, at all sports. Let's just look at what's happening at national sport across yeah. the country. Um, the big question for me, though, is this year's an Olympic year. Yeah. We've got karate making its debut at the Olympics for the first time. Yeah. We've got five combat sports on show yeah. at the Olympics. The big question for me is how many South African delegations will represent our country mm. at those Olympics mm. later this year? Mm. Look, we've produced karate world champions, not at the Olympics because we haven't been there, but we've produced karate world champions at karate world championships, so we're capable of doing it. Boxing, there's a lot of talent here. Wrestling as well. Wrestling, we've had guys at very high levels competing and winning. Uh, you know, boxing, yeah, there's so much talent, but it's not coming through because there's not enough support coming from A, the public, because it's not really televised anymore, and I think people need to start watching boxing again. And, um, you know, B, because they're not getting the government support that they need. Or if they are, it's not coming through thick enough. Talking about more fans watching boxing, I looked, uh, I think it was a show ago, we were looking at the number of champions that South Africa has currently has worldwide yeah. in terms of world champions. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the silver belts and the gold belts and the, and, the, and, and, and the continental belts. We've got four champions currently recognized globally. Three of them are IBO champions. Yeah. Now we know that there's five predominant sort of stables or five big belts. Mm, belts. IBO is the least recognized of the four. Yeah. And we have three big ones. I mean, we had Kevin Arena just sort of defending his IBO Cruiserweight Championship this weekend. Yeah. But the big one, we only have one champion that's sitting outside of the IBO. Yeah. How critical is that fact to the growth of boxing in the country? Do you think it's relevant? I mean, we've got five world champions. You ask people on the street to name one current one, and they won't be able to. It's a lack of awareness. You know, and there's really, I mean, you know, we've had some of the greatest boxers in the world come out of this country, and people just aren't aware of it. They're just not behind it. The fact that only Supersport seems to broadcast most of the combat sports and only selected big fights, big, big problem? Um, what do you think? Absolutely. I think it's not out for the masses. Uh, the vast majority of the country does not have access to the likes of Supersport, so they cannot get to see those big title fights. They cannot see, get to see these, these, these South African champions doing it with a flag or for the flag. Um, exactly. And so when it used to be on SABC, yeah. I think there was a far greater reach. I mean, I look back, I remember the days, Brian Mitchell, uh, maybe Jake McClala, um, Dinga and Torbella, all fighting, and we could watch it on, on, on national TV. Now? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Not available. Yeah, and hey, listen, there's no mention of it on the radio. There's no mention of it on the internet. You know, you don't, you don't see it. It's, not, it's just not in the public. You don't see big posters outside of, you know, Maruti M. Talani defending his, what, world title for the 12th time or something. He's a real world champion, Absolutely. and no one knows who he is. Absolutely. You know, he should be a superstar. And I think for 
to a degree, we've got to put a little bit of that, uh, that blame at the feet of Golden Gloves. Uh, not doing enough, I think, to promote it outside of the little click. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes down to media, the lack of media exposure. Yeah, absolutely, and I think Golden Gloves are doing all they can. They're playing to win in a, in a game that's heavily stacked against them. You know, it's, it's not, a, not a big sport in the country anymore. There's not a lot of money in it anymore. And they're still trying to keep things going. You know, Golden Gloves, I don't think they make money on their shows here. They make money when they take the guys overseas, but I don't think they make any money here. I think that in itself, to the viewers out there, is a show all on its own. And uh, right now, if you've been watching, we're sitting listening to uh, Brendan Katz, owner of uh, Fight Sports Center here in Norwood, Johannesburg. We're broadcasting from the gym. Heck of a lot of activity taking place in the background. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to break down all of this weekend's top punchy kicky action. We'll see I you just want to add one more thing there. I think if it wasn't for Golden Gloves, I don't think there'd be any boxing in the country at all anymore. Great point. We'll see you after this. Introducing the new, fresh, and exciting Rhapsody of Realities app 3.0. The Messenger Angel Rhapsody of Realities just got a new updated app for reading Rhapsody Daily articles. Enjoy reading and listening to your Rhapsody on the go while taking advantage of these amazing features. Brand new design. Enjoy the new design built to take advantage of the latest technologies to make your app experience awesome. It's simpler and easier to use. With just one click, you have access to the article for the day. It's that easy. Sync notes. Pin down moments of divine inspiration while studying the devotional and sync them to the cloud to be available anywhere, anytime. A new interactive store. Visit the store and get all books by Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakalome for people of all ages and download them to your library. Store your favorite books in an easy access folder. Enjoy unlimited access when you upgrade to our premium subscription. Gain access to the complete package of Rhapsody of Realities every month. This includes the entire month's devotional on the go with free audio devotional add-ons. Track your reading habits daily with our automated calendar and identify unread days for the devotional. Read further studies right within the app. Download the new Rhapsody mobile app today for free and be inspired anytime and everywhere on the go. Available on the Google Play Store. Welcome back to Fight Sports Uncovered here Thursday night. We're coming to you from Fight Sports Center out of Norwood in Johannesburg. Uh, alongside me, Brendan Katz former MMA professional and uh, owner of Fight Sports Center here in Norwood and in Bedford View, as we just recently heard, they've opened up their second gym out there in Bedford View. And it's time for us to break down this weekend's punchy kicky action. And uh, I think starting off, for me, it's always exciting to watch Ryan Garcia. Uh, this weekend, he's defending that silver lightweight belt that he earned uh, some time back. He's defending it against Francisco Fonseca, Ryan Garcia, 19 and 0, undefeated, up against Fonseca, who's 25 and 2. Ryan Garcia just recently coming off of that fantastic win against Romero Duno, beating him in just one round. Okay, Duno was sort of set up to be the guy that was probably going to sort of knock Ryan Garcia off his perch. Not even a round later, Duno is out for the count. Brendan. Ryan Garcia, definitely an up-and-coming superstar when it comes to boxing. Mm, definitely. There's some really good guys coming through. It's a new sort of batch of talent that's coming through, and it's just in time because, you know, with Mayweather stepping back, you know, he left a big void that, that hasn't really been filled because those, that sort of, when Mayweather was, was on his way through with guys like Cotto, like Pacquiao, like Canelo, I mean, those guys were killers. That was a murderer's row, and that was a golden age for the welterweight division. So now it's going to be interesting to see with, with kids like Ryan Garcia coming through who follows him in. Looking back at boxing of old, there wasn't really much of this diving up and down divisions to sort of just capture as many belts as we can. All of a sudden, and I think it, since the advent of MMA and the Conor McGregor jumping up and down, now every boxer left, listen, right and center is looking to go Yeah, listen, I mean, boxing, boxing weight loss has changed every two and a half kilos. It's not a huge thing. I mean, if you're cutting, if you're really cutting a lot of weight, if you're cutting seven or eight kilos, I mean, that's three weight losses. And you can probably still go up three more fairly comfortably. So I'm not taking away from them. It's amazing that they can do it, and it's hard weight cutting. But it, it's why they're always going to be, unless MMA matches the number of weight losses, why there's always going to be more multi-weight world champions in boxing and MMA. 
Absolutely. So looking at that fight, cannot wait to see Ryan Garcia back in the ring. He's vowed that this year is going to be a super year for him and for the, uh, the Golden, uh, Golden Boy promotion as well as for DAZN. Um, for for um, uh, Francisco uh, Fonseca, this young man comes out of uh, Nicaragua. He is vowed to make sure that uh, after Ryan Garcia, he is going to become the next Nicaraguan world champion. We'll wait to see what happens come Valentine's night. So uh, if you uh, may be single, not doing anything on Valentine's night, you've got some boxing to watch. Moving across to that IBF super middleweight title fight, Caleb Plant up against Vincent Fagenbutz. This is taking place in Tennessee, the USA. Caleb Plant undefeated at 19-0, coming up against the German uh, Victor Fagenbutz. A lot of guys think that Fagenbutz has got what it takes to upset um, uh, Caleb Plant. I don't see it happening. But then again, if we look at their respective records, we look at Caleb Plant, he comes with a 58% KO rate. But looking at Fagenbutz, he's got an 85% knockout ratio. Surely coming into a fight, Brendan, that's got to play on the mind of your opponent. Depends on the quality of the opponent. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to knock out cans, you know what I mean? Isn't it? Sure. But when you look at a guy that's sort of fought, you know, 31 times, he's only got two losses, and he's got an 85% knockout ratio, you've got, to, you've got to fought a little bit more than just sort of... Sure, pot sure, sure. Pot plant. So, so you know, he's, he's stepped up. You know, he's built up his record. He tried to make that jump up to the next level, and he fell short. And then he tried to do it again, and he fell short again. So... Maybe his management have sort of decided, well, this guy's probably never going to be a real world champion, but we can test him and have, have good quality fights against guys like Ryan Garcia, who are still protecting that O and still climbing through the ranks. It's, Ryan, it's uh, Caleb Plant's biggest test so far. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll Absolutely. see what happens. It's this, that's the question. That's why there is this fight. You know, does he get past this guy up to the next level or not? Absolutely. So we'll wait and see what happens Saturday night. Caleb Plant up against Victor Fagenbutz. And then the other big one that's taking place, the real punch kicky sort of event of the weekend. It's uh, UFC Fight Night 167. It's Corey Anderson up against Jan Blakovic. Now, MMA has been very much in the limelight since last weekend. Before we get to UFC 167, let's talk that light heavyweight title fight. I'm sure you've got a view on it. John Jones up against uh, uh, the man that everyone thought won the fight. Oh, I no, say everyone. Not, not everyone. Okay. Not everyone. No, no, not everyone. <laughs> A vast majority of the MMA fans saying sure. that, that, that he should have won that fight. Sure. Um, going into the championship rounds, John Jones down on effective striking, yeah. three rounds to nil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your thoughts? Um, I think that stat counts don't tell the story. You can count punches all day. You know, it's doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. And not only that, but the, stat, the, the punch counters aren't always accurate. You know, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, it's not about how many times you touch your opponent, it's how often are you striking effectively. Now, if you just touch and there's no damage, is it effective? You know, um, John Jones is not, there's no one right now who can stop him. He's too, you know, when he started out, he was, he was a robot that Greg Jackson was playing the controllers and Jones followed instructions and he executed and no one could stop him. Now he knows how to do that himself. So he can make adjustments on the fly, you know, between him and, and uh, not Greg Jones, Greg Jackson, between the two of them, you know, there's no way, there's no way anyone's stopping John Jones anytime soon. The fight with Reyes, you know, it's the same as the fight with Thiago Santos. You know, switch the commentary off and leave the stat counters and you'll watch a different fight. Um, Jones hurt Santos, he more than once, he put him down more than once, you know, he was on the back foot, but he was doing all the damage. So Santos was walking into shots. Reyes, it was the opposite. When he Jones, was he, well, Jones was on the front foot. Reyes never really did any sort of significant damage beyond one one moment. Um, you know, and Jones put the pressure on him, and, and he probably landed more effective shots. Especially in those last two rounds, he started going back to his wrestling game, mm. a lot more takedowns because that was sort of blatantly sort of missing in the first three rounds. Second, well, the last two rounds of championship rounds, John Jones brought that. Do you think that that was the deciding factor in terms of a lot of those judges then ruling, hold on, I'll forget about those first two rounds, those final two were? Yeah, listen, I mean, when you're watching on TV, it's not the same as when you're sitting there live. When you're sitting there as a, as a, as a judge and you're like eight feet from where everything is happening, you get a whole different feel for what's going on than you do sitting, you know, watching on TV or further back in the stands. That's why a lot of people watch Mayweather and they think, well, he's losing when they're in the stands, but you watch it again on TV or you watch from the judge's perspective, you see those shots are just missing or just falling short. You know, meanwhile, he's landing flush. So, you know, that's always a factor. You can't, you, you know, it's, it's, 
you've got to rely on the judges. I mean, judging is just a tough thing, and there's a lot of guys who are completely incompetent, but you know, it is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. You have to beat the champion to beat the champion, and Reyes didn't do that. Absolutely, and that was the view on Monday night from our resident um, and, and now recently installed president of the John Jones Supporters Club, Tumam Wandla. So he, he's definitely on, on, on your side when, when it comes to this. Why I raised the John Jones discussion is that was the light heavyweight championship. Yes. Headlining UFC 167 mm. is a light heavyweight bout. Mm. Corey Anderson, Jan Blakovic, they are ranked five and six respectively within the light heavyweight division of the UFC. The winner there surely is going to have a shot at John Jones. Um, but with all of the Israel Adesanya, John Jones taking place, John Jones talking about going up to heavyweight, taking on Stipe Miocic, who already has probably got Francis Ngannou, um, Rosenstrake all lined up to fight first. Do we see irrespective of what happens this weekend at 167. Mm. What's next for John Jones? Mm. Well, what do you think? I mean, let's, let's look at it, right? There. Corey Anderson, wrestler, primarily. He's a very good ground guy. He's not going to stop John Jones on the ground. No way. He's not going to take him down. He's not going to keep him there. Blakovic is the opposite. He's already got past uh, Jacare, who's got a phenomenal ground game, and is very strong. He's got good takedowns. I don't think Anderson has what it takes to beat Blakovic. Uh, I don't think either of them have what it takes to beat John Jones. I don't see any way either of them won that fight. If Jones moves up to fight Stipe, I think that's the worst fight of all the options that could happen to Stipe. Uh, unless, unless, you know, and the same thing with Adesanya coming up. I mean, if Adesanya comes up, Jones is going to push him on the cage and wrestle with him for three rounds so he's got no more arms left. Correct. And then he's going to knock him out, Correct. you know. I don't, I don't see anyone beating John Jones. I mean, they, they, you know, Dominic Reyes was probably the guy to do it in two years from now, you know, or a year from now. It was a mistake for him to fight him now for the same reason it was a mistake for Canelo to fight Mayweather. Hang around for two years, you know, protect your zero, and then when that guy goes, you fill that pedestal. But now, because of the fights already happened, no matter what else happens, he'll never climb to that level. Jones is always going to keep him down. Mayweather's always going to be above Canelo. It's the way it is. Jones, holes in his game have been found out, in my opinion. Santos, uh, Smith, Reyes have shown that Jones is vulnerable. Is that not light at the end of the tunnel for a couple of other contenders to be thrown? I don't think there's been any significant holes. Uh, Smith got murdered. Um, Reyes, touch and go. I think if Jones turned it up sooner, he would have taken him out. Uh, and Santos, I had Jones winning that, that fight. I think it, it may have been 5-0, to zero, it may have been 4-1. to one. He convincingly beat Santos. Santos found nothing, in my opinion. Right, looking at what's coming up this weekend, a lot of boxing, a lot of MMA, and uh, like we said, it's always going to be fun as we build up to this weekend's punchy, kicky action. I mean, you, you know, you want to look at, at the difference in levels here. You look at what, what Reyes and OSP, they fought a great fight for three rounds. Reyes dominated, but he didn't get rid of them until I think the last second, or whatever it was, literally. Um, did Jones get rid of uh, OSP quick, quick? Yeah, they're, they're, not, yeah, they're not on the same level, those two. You know, and again, it's down to the referees and the judges standing there and watching. But switch off the sound, leave the stat counter, and we'll see a different fight. I promise you. Right, we've spoken about what's happening globally, internationally, in terms of uh, big punchy kicky action. Just want to get your thoughts. We're about a month out from the very first EFC event of the year. Um, we're already talking about a title fight. The welterweight belt is up for grabs. Uh, Lal Karam up against Temba Garimba. Uh, Temba Garimba being sort of named the, 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 the sportsman of the year for Zimbabwe. Um, really sort of going out very vocal about the fact that, that he is the best welterweight in the world. He's coming up against the guy that hasn't lost yet. Uh, a solid, solid contender in terms of Lal Karam. Your thoughts in terms of that fight and what we can look to see in EFC this year? Listen, Garimbo knocking out Maynard was a big surprise. Uh, and that's what he does. He consistently surprises. Um, let's see. I mean, I'd bet on, on Garimbo. I'd bet, I'd bet a fair whack on Garimbo. I wouldn't ride Lyle Karim off, but I don't think it's, it's a good bet to bet on him. Okay. Uh, as far as the EFC in general goes and MMA in the country in general goes, you know, you like MMA. You put on a... a you know, we talk about it, you get it out there, you, you do your bit to bring people's awareness of it. You know, if I like MMA, I wear a shirt that says I like MMA. You know, people need to support what they enjoy. So, you know, if you like watching MMA, you want to see better fights, put on your TV or go watch the event live. You know, don't worry about streaming it three days later. Show them, show them that there's live support. And with that, there'll be bigger sponsors, there'll be bigger paydays, there'll be better athletes going. You know, attend the amateur events, support the sport, you know. 
if everyone does that, I mean, you, you bring your buddies to a fight, you bring five guys, they bring five guys next time, and then all of a sudden it's bigger than soccer. Att attendance at amateur events, your thoughts on that? Very, very poor at the moment. It's not... No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I mean, you know, many of the Alpha MMA shows are just about sold out. Um, you know, there's a couple of seats available, but not a hell of a lot. And they put on good shows. And the thing about amateurs is they're not fighting for money. They're fighting because they like fighting. So they come and they get stuck in. And some of them are terrible, and you go home and you're lucky Absolutely. about how useless they were. And some of them are really good, and it's nice seeing that young sort of up-and-coming talent. There's some really cool stuff that amateurs, happens at amateur shows. You know, so I think people should go watch live. The move from amateurs into professionals, you said some of those amateur fights are very, very terrible. Um, looking back at, at some of the pro, the pro fights, especially some of those debut bro, pro fights, are just as terrible as some of those amateur fights. Is that just not a factor of those amateurs not spending enough time at amateur status? I think there's a big, big, big gap with the quality of coaching in the country. I think that, you know, you, you, with all due respect, you could go and open up an MMA gym and coach it. Have you ever coached anything in your life? You know, but you could go and do it. There's no barrier to entry. One of the things the government is doing is instituting a bill that will create a barrier to entry, and I think it's a good thing, you know, amongst other things that, that, they, that they're doing there. And I think that's a good thing. And I think when the quality of the coaching improves, then we'll see the quality of the fighters improve. You know, if you see a guy who's just a complete palooka, you know, it's for one or two reasons. Either his coach doesn't care and the guy's been nagging for a fight, or he just doesn't have a quality coach. Like a coach wants him to do well, but he doesn't have it. That's why if you have a look at what's happening in the, in the amateur scene, because we're involved there, and the pros where we're going, there's a few gyms that dominate because they know how to coach. You know what I mean? It's, no, it's not like there's some special talent that some people have. It's, it's the same as learning how to, how to work a camera. You know, anyone can learn how to do it. It's just how much effort you put in. And then making sure that the same thing applies to your fighters. You know, if, if I put in the time to be a good coach, to be on time, to be, you know, a quality coach, and I'm constantly learning, I expect the same thing from my fighters. You know, if you're late, you're out. If, you, if you're not ready by the time training starts, you're out. You know what I mean? It's a very strict sort of regime because that's how we treat ourselves. And we expect the fighters to behave that way. And that way, when they go and fight, you know, that's why we take out the top clips. You know, we, on, on an amateur level, because we haven't fought pro yet, we have, uh, you know, a 70-30 win record against the top gyms in the country, you know, and it's, it's not by accident. Hmm. Well, there you have it, the outspoken Brendan Katz right here, Norwood, Johannesburg, out of Fight Sports Centre. If you want us to get your gym here, bring us a show to your gym, get hold of us. You'll find us on social media, you'll find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or you can just send us a message on King's Chat. We're more than happy to set up something with you. Get your gym into the limelight. Talk about what you're doing to build the combat sports fraternity. Brendan, thanks so much for you know, your time. You know, I've got to tell you, talk about building the combat sports fraternity. We sponsor some of our fighters. Even though they're amateurs, you know, we, I don't, I don't, you know, the money that we make here doesn't go into just building the business. We're also building the sport. And we get nothing from it. It costs us money to do, but it's important for the sport. And everyone should be doing that. And right there, it couldn't have been said any better. Brendan, thanks so much for thanks, your time. Mark. We'll see you on Monday night as we wrap up all of this weekend's top fight sports action. Thanks so much for joining. Until next time, defend yourself at all times.